Hello children. Good morning. Welcome to our science class. Today I am going to teach heat and measurement. Heat measurement. In the previous class, in the sixth class, we learned about different changes that takes place in the different seasons. That is in the lesson changes around us. In the different seasons, we wear different types of clothes. In winter season, we wear woolen and dark colored clothes to keep us warm. So, why do we wear dark colored clothes in winter season? These dark colored clothes absorb heat from the sun and keep us cool, keep us warm. And in summer season, we wear light colored cotton clothes to keep us cool. Why do we wear this white light colored cotton cloths? Means this light colored cloths reflects the heat of the sun and keep us cool. So like this we wear different types of cloths in a different seasons. In winter season we feel very cool inside our house. Then we sit, we come out of, we come out from the house and we sit in the sun. Then we feel hot but in a summer season we feel hot even inside the house as children how can we know whether something is hot or cold here i am giving some examples ice cream fruit juices metal chair kept in a hot sun and spoon in a cup having hot tea. Okay. In this, which objects are hot and which objects are cold? Fruit juice and ice cream are cold. Metal chair which is kept in a hot sun and spoon in the cup of hot tea are hot. We know that some objects are hotter than other objects and some objects are colder than other objects. How do you know which objects are hotter than other objects and which objects are colder than other objects? We need a reliable method to decide hotness and coldness of an object. So we express the hotness and coldness of an object in terms of temperature. So what is the temperature? Temperature is a measure of degree of hotness or coldness of an object. Coldness of an object. Can you guess the hotness or coldness of an object by touching? No, it is not possible. So you observe here one activity. Take three balls or vessels. You pour hot water in one vessel and you pour lukewarm water in another vessel and in third vessel you pour cool water. Okay? Now, you put your left hand finger in a hot water, right hand finger in cool water. Simultaneously. Okay? At a time. So, you keep your left hand finger in hot water, right hand finger in cool water. Wait for 2-3 minutes. Okay, after that you take out your both fingers and dip in a lukewarm water. In this both fingers means here, do both the fingers feel same hotness? No. Though they are in the same hotness of water, one finger feels it cold and one finger feels it hot. Means, which finger be kept in a cool water that feels hot in a lukewarm water and which finger be kept in a hot water that feels cool in a lukewarm water. Okay children, so we cannot say, we cannot guess exactly the hotness of an object with the fingers or with our with the touching. 
Okay, children. Here, the water, the water in a three tubs have different degrees of hotness. Different degrees of hotness. But we cannot, we cannot be determined. Means that cannot be determined by simply touching. Okay, children. Did you understand up to here? So we cannot. Guess exactly the hotness of an object simply by touching. Next, heat a form of energy. Here, we know heat a form of energy. That is transferred from an object at higher temperature to a to one at lower temperature. Okay, children. Heat is a form of energy. Means it is transferred from an object at higher temperature to one at lower temperature. If we stand near a fire or a, in the hot sun, the heat energy enters our body. Then we feel hot. Enters our body and we feel hot. And if we put some ice pieces in our hands, the heat energy from our body moves to the pieces of ice. That's why we feel cold. So, what is the heat? The energy which makes an object appear hot or cold is called a heat. So, take for example. Here, we boil rice. Or water in a vessel with a lid. Yes, no, no. So after some time, we notice the movement of the lid up and down with a sound. Sometimes it may be thrown away too. What is the reason? How the lid is moving up and down? Here, the boiled water is being converted to water vapor. This water vapor increases, the value of water vapor increases due to heat. So this increasing volume of water vapor tries to go out from the vessel. So in this process, it tries to lift the lid. So to lift any object, we need energy. Yes, Nana? So here, water vapor also needs energy to lift the lid. So, this water vapor gets energy from the heated water. And water got energy from the heat of the fire. So, thus we can say heat is a form of energy. Next, conversion of, conversion of energies. Here, different forms of energies convert into other forms of energy means one form of energy converted into other forms of energy. See here, first rub your palms together. How do you feel? And rub, take one soap nut, rub on stone and touch it. How do you feel? You feel hot. So in both the cases, the mechanical energy is converted to heat energy. So like this, in winter season, we use different energies to heat the water. Yes, Nana? See here first, we use gas stove or electric water heaters or solar heaters to heat the water. So this, if we use electric water heater, the electrical energy is converted to heat. If we use gas stove, the chemical energy is converted to heat. Here in a gas, there are some chemicals. So here chemical energy is converted to heat. In a solar cookers, means solar heaters, if we use solar heaters, the solar energy is converted to heat. Here, these all energies means different forms of energies are being converted to heat energy. So like this, heat energy is also converted to other forms of energy. 
For example, in thermal power stations, the heat energy is converted to electrical energy. Means here in thermal power stations, they use they use coal to produce electricity. Means they heat the coal to produce electricity. So here heat energy is converted to electrical energy. In a steam engine, the mechanical energy or uh, the heat energy is converted to mechanical energy, which helps in moving the engine. Okay, children, did you understand? In a steam engine, the heat energy is converted to mechanical energy, which helps in moving the engine. Okay, next. Heat and temperature. What is the next one? Heat and temperature. So if we stand near a fire or in the hot sun, we feel warm. When we keep the warmer object near to the cold object or near to the cooler object, the heat energy moves from the warmer object to the cooler object. Until both attains the same temperature. Okay, children. So take one spoon, keep in a hot boiled rice. Okay, after some time, you try to touch it. You try to touch the spoon. How do you feel? The spoon is very hot. Yes, Nana. So we can't touch the spoon. Means here. The heat energy moved from the hot boiled rice to spoon. Yes. So here the heat energy moves from the warmer object to cooler object until both attains the same temperature. So here heat and temperatures are different. Heat and temperatures are different, not same. So what is the heat? The energy which makes an object appear hot or cold is called a heat. But what is temperature? Temperature is a measure of the heat energy which indicates the ability of a body to give heat to another body or absorb heat from another body. So if we stand near a sun, our body absorbs heat from the sun. Yes, no, no. Or spoon we kept in a rice, hot boiled rice. Here, the boiled rice, hot boiled rice gives energy, heat energy to the spoon. Yes, no, no. Did you understand here? Energy or temperature is a measure of the heat energy which indicates the ability of a body to give heat to another body or observe heat from the another body. This is thermometer. We can see this in a hospitals used by doctors. We use these thermometers to measure the temperature. Okay. And these thermometers are made up of transparent glass. So what are the parts present in the thermometer? It is a glass bulb and mercury. And this is capillary tube and it is called as a stem. Okay. See here. At one end of the glass tube, there is a bulb and that bulb is filled with the mercury. And the other end of the glass tube is sealed after removing air from it. We find a scale which is marked to express the temperature in degree Celsius. So we read the temperature with the help of this scale. So the arrangement of the marks is called a scale of temperature. So are you seeing these numbers? 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 20. These are the marks. Okay, these marks are used to read the temperature. To read the temperature. Okay, children. So the arrangement of the marks is called a scale of temperature. All the temperatures are based on the fact that matter expands on 
heating to understand how to understand the working of thermometers we need to know how matter expands on heating okay children take one activity here now take one round flat bottom flask okay and fill it with the colored water fix a cork having a capillary tube having a capillary tube now keep this flask in a tub pour hot boiling water in the tub okay first the level of colored water in the capillary tube is up to here only okay now you observe after keeping this flask in a hot water observe the level of colored water in the capillary tube so what do you observe the level of colored water increases in the capillary tube why due to the heat of the water due to the hot boiling water the level of colored water increased in the capillary tube okay children now take this flask from the tub and keep aside now you observe the level of the colored water in the capillary tube what do you observe the level of colored water decreases in the capillary tube so what you can understand here the liquids expands on heating and contracts on cooling so in this activity we learn water expands on heating contracts on cooling so like here mercury also like this only mercury also expands on heating contracts on cooling so mercury is used as a liquid for indicating temperature in thermometers so apart from mercury we can also use alcohols we can also use alcohols as a thermometer liquids okay children so what are the properties of alcohol and uh, properties of uh, mercury properties of mercury its expansion is uniform first one its expansion is uniform for equal amounts of heat it expands by equal amounts means for 1 degree temperature it expands only 1 degree celsius on the scale okay and it is opaque and shiny it is opaque and shiny and it does not stick to the walls of the glass tube and it is easily available in pure state and it is good conductor of heat what are the properties of uh, mercury its expansion is uniform it is opaque and shiny it is good a good conductor of heat and it does not stick to the walls of the glass tube and it is easily available in pure state and what are the properties of alcohol it can record very low temperatures it can record very low temperatures and it expands but degree celsius is rise in temperature is very high means its expansion per degree celsius rise in temperature is very high means for 1 degree celsius temperature mean uh, it shows 2 degrees on a scale so like this okay children next it can be colored brightly hence we can it is easily visible okay children what are the properties of alcohol it records very low temperatures 
it expands but decrease celsius rise in temperature is very high and the color of alcohol is very bright so it is easily visible okay children did you understand up till here so tomorrow in the next class we learn about the different types of thermometers okay children